Thank you for joining us for the Food Loss and Waste podcast. This episode will explore actors to reduce food loss and waste, the private sector. This podcast is hosted by the USAID Research Community of Practice subgroup on food loss and waste, and will feature interviews with subject matter experts to explore the implications of and approaches to addressing food loss and waste. My name is Kelly Cormier, and I'm the Division Chief for Food Safety in the Center for Nutrition in USAID's Bureau for Resilience and Food Security. And today I'll be speaking with Ignacio Gavilan from the Consumer Goods Forum. Welcome, Ignacio. Please introduce yourself. Thank you, Kelly, and a very warm welcome to everyone. So my name is Ignacio. I work for the Consumer Goods Forum, an organization that brings together retailers and manufacturers from across the world. So think about your Walmarts, your Kroger's, your Targets from the retail side. Think about the Kellogg's, Unilever's, Nestle's from the manufacturing mm -hmm. side. Thank you. Thank you for agreeing to speak with us. My first question for you. Why does the Consumer Goods Forum prioritize reducing food loss and waste in the private sector? And if you, you can go on to talk about the trade-offs that the private sector must consider in addressing food loss and waste, we'd appreciate that. Over to you. Super. So um, let me start by saying the food system is, is a very complex network. It's made up of vast supply chains and, and multiple stakeholders from, from the farming community to the end consumer, right? From farm to fork, as we say. Each of them can contribute to the growing problem of, of uh, food loss and waste. So uh, the food system, I believe, has never been so important. And we as an industry need to take control of our own resources and waste uh, in a much better way. Uh, a recent report uh, from WWF and a UK supermarket, Tesco, estimated that 2.5 billion tons of food are lost or wasted annually. 1.2 billion tons of farms and 931 million tons in retail outlets. That includes food services, consumer households, etc. So this suggests that pretty much up to 40% of all food produced could be going uneaten, which is even greater than the 30% that we estimated previously in 2011. So uh, th this is horrible from many points of view, economic, social, environmental, <coughs> ethical, I would say. So the current structure of the food system is disjointed, is fragmented, I would even say broken. Prevented food loss and waste at scale would definitely offset huge amounts of environmental damage and biodiversity loss, as well as increase the accessibility of food for uh, food insecure populations, which it's estimated that about a billion people in the world have difficulty accessing food. Uh, you asked us about the trade-offs. So I think the trade-offs are likely to be about optimizing the whole supply chain. So reducing waste <clears throat> is one part in one part might increase waste elsewhere in the supply chain so you need to take sort of a whole chain approach the other trade-offs will be around which impacts you are prioritizing for example is it is it food waste by waste is it carbon footprint is it water usage is it land use just think about water um 70 percent of the world's fresh water is used in agriculture so if one third of the agricultural products never get eaten, we're using one third of that water for nothing because it will go to waste. Another trade-off might be on, on the use of plastics, for example. Um, <clears throat> do we want to use more plastic in vegetables to increase the shelf life, which means more plastics overall? Or do we want to keep the fruit and vegetables without plastics, but then with more discipline from the consumers? when it comes to the um, expiration dates, et cetera. Thank you very much. I know you're just touching the surface um, of, of all the trade-offs, but let's, um, let's go on to the next question. Now, um, Ignacio, could you tell us what has the Consumer Goods Forum done over the past few years to reduce food loss and waste in the private sector? 
So, so as I mentioned, we're an organization made up of, of um, or comprised of approximately 400 retailers and manufacturers from across the world. So given the magnitude of the problem of food waste and our membership being mainly food and beverage companies, food waste has always been at the center of our activities. CGF members are, are very much committed to reducing food loss in their own operation and supply chains. Uh, so now in alignment with the CGF larger global uh, strategy based on the SDG 12.3 of responsible consumption, uh, the CGF has launched in 2020 a coalition of action on food waste. These are 23 companies that would like to accelerate impact uh, through streamlined and targeted collaborative action, uh, mainly around three distinctive areas, which I think are important for the audience to know. The first one is harmonized reporting uh, for our own operations. So everybody's measuring, you need to create a baseline and then against that baseline you compare every year, right? So we developed a harmonized reporting template for that. So everybody's comparing, in this case, uh, makes a lot of sense, apples to apples and pairs to pairs, right? Um, <clears throat> so that's very important. So we know that our members are measuring and reporting against uh, progress. And this is for their own operations. Then we need to go upstream. So think about retailers and manufacturers. They buy from a lot of suppliers, mainly in the agricultural commodities space. So upstream losses, whether it is on-farm or post-harvest losses, are critical in here and I go back to my example on water right um, so we need to be very diligent on how we measure those and how we track and make sure that don't happen there are um, crops out there that end up being 40% lost which which is uh, horrible is a catastrophe but it gets unnoticed so we're trying to unveil all of this issues in the farming community and making sure we, we tackle them. We're working with universities, we're working with farmers, uh, we're trying to, to make sure that we understand why some of it is, is happening. It, can, it might be to cosmetic issues, ugly food, it might just be the type of contract that some companies use. Uh, that doesn't really mean that they buy the whole crop but they just select the times of the year where they buy or the type of, of, of uh, fruits and vegetables. And then the last one, of course, is the consumer engagement because in some countries, especially in very developed countries, most of the food waste happens at home with us. I think through the pandemic, we all learn uh, a bit more and we're more careful because we spend a lot of time at home. But um, uh, the consumer angle is super important for us and, and we need to, to continue that awareness about uh, food waste with uh, communities uh, around the world. So those are the three distinctive areas and we're very happy with this coalition. It's, I think it's making a difference and I encourage everyone in the food and beverage sector to really look at our webpage and, and look at the different uh, protocols and, and thought leadership pieces that we produced. Thank you so much. Um, you know, you started when we began um, talking uh, to describe how the scope of the problem is so big within the food system. And I can see from what you've just shared that the Consumer Goods Forum is indeed taking action throughout the food system. Um, USAID and, and, develop, and our development partners can really learn from your experience with accountability and measuring um, reductions in food loss and waste. Thank you for sharing that. My final question, how, or can you share the role that date labeling plays in food loss and waste and the work the Consumer Goods Forum has done in this field? So this is this is be getting really specific, but I think you can help um, uh, you can help us understand the role of date labeling as we think about um, the context of food loss and waste in a developing con context too. Yep. Super, and this is very important and it, it links to my last point on consumer engagement, right? Um, so we've we've worked with the, the likes of Champions 12.3, which is an organization obviously dealing with the SDG 12.3, and we did a call to action back in 2017 to simplify and standardize food date labels globally. 
So the CGF Board of Directors unanimously adopted the call to action, which notes uh, retailers and food producers should take three very important steps to simplify date labels and therefore uh, help reduce food waste. The first one is use only one label at a time, right? So when you buy a product, you should find just the one label. If you have something else to tell your consumer about the batch number, the reference number, any number that can be confused with a date, put it somewhere else, put it into the barcode, but don't mix it with the date labeling, because it confuses people. Second one, you have two choices of labels. One is the expiration date for perishable items, your ground beef, uh, and that should be used by, after which date, uh, you should discard it because it could be unsafe to it, right? And the other one is a food quality indicator for non-perishable items. And this is the best before uh, labeling. The, of course, the exact wording could be tailored to different um, <coughs> regions and, and languages, but we want to avoid things like refrigerated by, in the case of fish, caught by, this is irrelevant, it doesn't tell the consumer anything. And if if someone sees a date in there that matches, you know, today or a couple of days ago, they might just be tempted to throw it away which, without really understanding what is it, right? So things that are refrigerated, caught by, uh, used by, uh, those should be eliminated. And then, of course, the third element is consumer education to better understand what date labels mean. So in addition to, to these uh, labels and products, the call to action recommends companies to partner with not-for-profit organizations, government agencies, uh, to educate consumers about how to interpret these uh, date labels, right? So uh, these education efforts, I think, are super important. They could include in-store displays, web materials, public service announcements. Many consumers don't know, for example, that many products are still safe to eat past the best before date. So, you know, things like salt might have a best before date, after which the product is still perfectly edible. Salt comes from a rock. It's been with us 35 million years in planet Earth. So it's not going to go bad in your little bottle, you know, because mm -hmm. sometimes the best before date refers to the attributes in terms of flavor and profiles and things like that, but it's perfectly edible. So you shouldn't discard things like that, pasta, sugar, salt, I mean, uh, those are the things, coffee, there's a number of things that even with the best before, this, they're completely safe to it. So well, hopefully that was useful. I think that was very useful. I mean, I think it reinforces um, how there's a relation, there's a trusting relationship between companies and consumers, and um, and standardization of labels will be be important. I know within my own family, we have debates about um, about labels and what they're telling us and how we should respond in turn. But thank you so much. Those are all the questions that I have for you. Um, really appreciated the way you walked us through the complexity of the problem you know, bringing it at a high level to discuss food systems and the challenge um, that they pose for food loss and waste. You helped us think about the trade-offs. Of course, you, you we only had time to touch upon a couple. You know, how do we prioritize um, among trade-offs within a food system? Um, your work within the Consumer Goods Forum, the actions that you're taking, what, how you're experimenting with measurement. Um, again, I want to reinforce, I know USAID has a lot to learn from that and our development partners will be paying attention. Um, so appreciate the actions and investments and commitment that your members are taking in that regard. Um, thank you. I th really appreciate your time, Ignacio. This was a pleasure. Thank you, Kelly. My pleasure. I hope it, it was useful and I'll be very happy to follow up with any of your members or partners or associates who wants to know this is this is a horrible issue that we need to tackle and as an industry I think we're not in control of our own impacts and destiny and this is a very dangerous place to be so we really need to tackle food waste and this is not just the companies it is a whole supply chain effort so any help 
is welcome from, from the farming community to the consumers themselves. So thank you very much for the opportunity to share uh, CGF's work on this critical topic. Our pleasure, thank you.